Well, SP12 brings with it a few changes to tests, um, but dare I say improvements to tests. Uh, the first one is actually in the test canvas. So if you're building a new test or editing an existing one, um, you have a nice easy feature for adding questions midway through and you just pick them off the list. So much better than having to scroll up to the top and use the menu over and over again. Okay, so that's real nice in and of itself. The other changes that we're seeing in SP12 are all part of the test deployment choices. Um, which work, you know, fairly much like they did before. Nothing's been removed in the way of functionality, and quite a few things have been added. You still have the same old multiple attempts. You can allow one by default, or unlimited ones, or specific numbers of them. I'm going to go ahead and just leave this at one. Force completion. Do not use this. It's a terrible setting. Just don't do it. It buys you more trouble than it's worth. Okay, timer. Same as before, you can set a timer, you can specify a number of minutes, and then you have an auto-submit choice defaults to off, in which case the user is prompted whether or not they want to go past the time limit, or on, in which case the paper is picked up. Now I'm going to go with on here, and I'm going to say you may do that a lot more frequently as well when you see a little later on some of the controls that have been added. Now, here's where you start seeing some power test availability exceptions. Everything on the screen up to now, you've been setting up how the test is available, when it's available, um, and what students are going to see when they interact with it. But, for example, I set up this time three-minute time limit on the test. Maybe that's not going to be fine for all my students. Maybe I have a student who needs longer to take the test. Well, I can add an exception and it gives me a choice of groups, so you could do this by group, or individual users. Now this course only has one user in it, but I'm going to pick that as an example. And see, it, it gives you a little uh, entry line here for, in this case, this one particular student. And you can make exceptions to pretty much every control. Do I want to allow this student to take it multiple times? If so, how many? or unlimited times, or do I want to leave this a single attempt, which is what I will do in this case. Do I want to leave the timer at three minutes and just turn off auto-submit, or do I want to give them more time? Like, let's say this is a five-minute time limit for this student. Okay, And you can make uh, as many of these exceptions as you like. You can set up multiple exceptions for uh, individual students, or you can start doing group-based stuff. See, the group tool is becoming more and more powerful as these sorts of capabilities get added to the system. And of course, if you come back here and you want to remove exceptions for students, that's what that button's for. Okay. Uh, you can still set due dates, and up until recently, due dates have been a pretty harmless thing. Like, I'll say that this one's due on the 5th, at oh, noon. Check this out. Do not allow students to start the test if the due date has passed. That means I can leave this link to the test showing up and as soon as this day and time passes, students won't be able to start the test. Isn't that cool? Uh, it means you don't have to make things disappear to keep students from using them. All right, let's get down here into it. Well, self-assessment options are the same as they have been. But the good stuff comes in in section 6 here, showing test results and feedback. I don't know if you remember how it was before. You got to choose um, score and uh, correct answer and what they submitted and all that kind of jazz. Uh, you still have the same capabilities, but you can control when things happen. For example, there is a default behavior of once the student has submitted, what should they see? You could make them see nothing. The default is to show the score that they earned, um, and there's little uh, details that give you a little more information about what you're doing, okay? Uh, in this case, checking any of these boxes is going to let students see the questions, okay? But then you can say, ah, once the due date's happened, they can see the score, and you know what? They can see everything else at that point. Um, and you have these other options available for uh, Example, if you have it stop being available, 
or after the attempts are graded. So if there's something that needs grading, you can show them more information once it's been graded. Um, I think the after due date's gonna be the most powerful of those though, if you're using the due dates, and it reminds you of when that is as well. You submit, and all of a sudden, you have these new capabilities put into place. You can get back and you can edit them anytime you like, But, as I say, the most important ones is that you can make exceptions to the general test availability rules. You can make the due date actually have some teeth. And you can control the test results that are displayed to students conditionally, so you don't have to keep going back in and manually editing all that. So, new test options. Is that cool or what?